What's really good, ladies and gentlemen? This week, we got something different to talk about. We got to talk about something different. We got to talk about the difference between being a freelancer and a business owner. Because I think a lot of people get it mixed up. They take the advice that I'm giving and they have a freelancer mindset. And I'm talking to business owners and they're two totally different things. So in today's episode of Content and Cash, we're going to really explain the differences of the two and why you need to really pay attention. And you need to know the differences between being a business owner and being a freelancer. Huge difference. Sit tight. Let's get right into it because the advice for each is different. Let's do it. You're listening to Content and Cash, a Flash Film Academy podcast. If you want to learn how to take pretty pictures, this is not the place. But if you're ready to make a living by learning the business behind the camera, buckle up because it's time to turn passion into profit with your host, Ty Turner. What's really good if this is your first time on this channel, this channel right here is designed for content creators who want to get that bag. We teach the business side of content creation. Now, other channels can tell you about all the gear in the world and why that's great. Here we teach you how to monetize that skill set once you get that gear. I'm going to ask all my people in the comments to post where you're from because we are live. We're definitely live. And my name is Todd. If this is your first time meeting me, what's cracking? I'm a former Army combat photographer. And today I want to talk about something because I keep getting a lot of comments about some of the advice that I'm giving. And I'm noticing that all of the comments are coming from a certain mindset, a certain uh, frame. And that mindset or that way of thinking for content creators is from the world of being a freelancer. Now, there's nothing wrong with being a freelancer. However, that is not what we teach here at Flash Home Academy. And let me kind of talk about the differences between what we teach and what being a freelancer is because there are some some things that are just different. There are some things that are completely different and a lot of people get it confused. So a freelancer, they don't solve problems. The only problem that freelancers solve is operating the camera for their director or their project manager. Like they are brought in to operate the audio video aspect of the project, right? So they don't, they don't, they're not there to solve the complete problem. Like they're usually paid hourly. Um, you know, a high end gig is just a lot of hours for them. A high end gig, maybe thousands of dollars, right? Uh, it may consist of, it may have consistent work depending on who, what, who and what gig they're doing. Um, uh, and with that, as a as an hourly worker that's working as a freelancer, yes, it's okay to ask for budget. Yes, it's okay to talk about camera gear and image quality because whoever's hiring you for that project have a image quality in mind. Like they have um, an idea in mind as to what they're trying to do or achieve. Uh, with that look, that feel, because they are the problem solvers. As a business owner, we teach you to be the key problem solver. We teach you to be the project manager over the complete project, right? So the project manager solves the problem for the client using a cinematic, a cinematic approach. They may hire a cinematographer, a videographer, a photographer, and they may care about the image quality, they being you in this position as a Flash Film Academy student. And as, as the project manager, one, the check is always going to be much bigger. Like I said, the director always make more money 
than the cameraman. Um, two, you're developing the relationship with the business or client so that you can nurture that relationship and you can continue to shoot for that brand. You can be a consultant for that brand. You can suggest other shoots for that brand. Um, you get paid based off the project and not just the hours. And that pay can go from thousands to millions, right? You then employ contractors or freelancers. So the businesses that hire the project manager or the company to, to, to see out whatever their multimedia needs are, that business don't care about cameras. That business don't care what type of camera you're shooting with. They don't care what type of lenses you're shooting with. All they care about is that you're solving their problem. And that, like, it's a huge difference. I see a lot of people like, oh, when I'm hired as a cinematographer, they care about my camera. Yeah, because you're a freelancer. You're hired by a director. A director is supposed to care about your, your gear. A director is supposed to care about the lenses that's being used. The company that hired the director don't. They don't. They leave it in the hands of the director. So, yeah, if you are a freelancer on set, now this goes for my filmmakers and my freelancers. If you are a freelancer on set, Big shout out to my dog, Rodney, in uh, New Mexico. If you're a freelancer on set, yeah, you're supposed to care about, you know, the gear and all of that. If they're showing you if, you, if you have it in camera kits. But business owners don't care about camera kits. If you're there to solve a problem, camera kits are not mentioned. They're not talked about. They're not brought up. Only the freelancer to the project manager. So why would I want to be a business owner and not just be a freelancer? Well, a lot of reasons. One, business owners cash bigger checks. They cash much bigger checks. Business owners develop relationships with clients and they nurture those relationships with clients so that they're ongoing relationships with clients. Business owners become the consultant for the client. Everybody under the project manager is replaced you can get another shooter i can get another dp i can get another director if needed i can get another camera guy we can swap out the cameras like everything below them is replaceable they are a part of the machine but the business is the machine so i want to own the machine because the machine gonna get the biggest check i'm if, if i own the business i'm gonna make profit off of the project and if i gotta work on the project i'm gonna make more profit because i'm gonna pay myself as a worker so owning the business you make more money you're in control of more you have bigger projects and and you get to control your destiny whereas as a freelancer, somebody may not like you. Somebody may just say, I don't like, I don't, I just don't like the shirt you wore today, bro. Like, don't show up tomorrow. I don't like this, that, and the other about you. Don't, don't show up. And there's nothing you can do about it. Freelancers work on websites like Upwork and things like that. Business owners create and nurture the relationship. Businesses want to work with businesses. If they if they're hiring freelancers, they already have a project manager. So they've hired a project manager or a consultant because businesses don't know who can film and who can't. Businesses don't know how to put a project together. Businesses don't know all of the aspects of creating content the way that we think they do. What, so what businesses do is they hire somebody who know it. And if they can get it in a complete business from A to Z, a turnkey solution, then they will because it provides value to that company. They don't want to have to deal with 10 people and have 10 more people on a payroll. Obviously, if they're outsourcing it, they want it outsourced. So they're going to outsource it where they only have to make one phone call or cut one check or do it once and not have to do it 20 times. If they wanted to do that, then those businesses would hire those freelancers themselves. But they don't want to do that. Businesses want to work with businesses that specialize in solving their problem. 
Just like you don't want to go hire somebody to dig for minerals, to stamp out metal, to run circuitry. You just want to buy an iPhone. You don't want to buy some. You don't want to go hire all the people it take to, to make all of the materials and design work to put everything together. You want the finished product. Companies want the finished product as well. They don't want to go through the loophole or go through all the red tape of bringing in a lot of people to make it happen. They want to hire one company. And it could be something as simple as, you know, an issue with your with your plumbing equipment. You don't want to hire a company that, that to come out and look at it and another company to, to make the pieces and another company. You don't want to go through all of that. You want to make one phone call. It's all about convenience. And as a business owner in the world of content creation, we offer a level of convenience that is valuable to the client. In fact, it's profitable to the client. That's something that is a, a big deal when it comes to going B2B versus B2C. Business to consumer, consumers purchase based off emotion, businesses purchase based off logic. People hire you often based off emotion. I mean, logically, you need to have the resume, but emotion, that's what interviews is, is 50%. Can you do the work with your resume? I already said it. And 50%, do I like you? Am I getting a good vibe from, from you? So when you're a freelancer, those are, that's what you run into. As a business owner, you will not run into that because my brand is what they're hiring. That's why I've had people say, well, Ty, well, why don't you have pictures and stuff on your website. They're not hiring me. They're hiring my brand. When you go get a package shipped, you're not hiring the person at the UPS store. You're hiring UPS. You're not hiring the person that installed your Comcast cable. You're hiring Comcast cable. So, you know, when you when you look at it like that, it starts to make sense. As a freelancer, you're hiring a person. So you can do all the personal branding you want. It don't matter as a freelancer answer because they're looking at your name, your resume, your portfolio as a person. And freelancers don't get that bag. Like they don't get the biggest bag. I'm not saying they don't get a bag because obviously they do, but they don't get that bag. Real quick, this episode is brought to you by our Capture and Convert Kit, which is free over at uh, flashfromacademy.com. Go check that out. If you uh, are not a member and you think about joining, you get five free courses and two free ebooks. And you get that loud sound. And that should be, listen, the, the Capture and Convert Kit has got enough in it where it should, it should get you enough business to more than pay for the membership for two, three years. There's no way you shouldn't be making money without the, with, with, if you got the, if you really go through the Capture and Convert Kit, there's no way you shouldn't be making money. It gets you going. It gets you pointed in the right direction. But, um, you know, I think it's important for people to understand because we, when a lot of people give information and they're talking and they're running their mouth about, I wouldn't do this, I wouldn't do that. You're speaking from the, from the position of a freelancer. Free Freelancers need to present camera kits because if I'm a director and I'm hiring a DP, I need to know what camera bodies he's proficient in. I need to know what glass he like to get the shot or, or style I want. If I'm hiring a lighting guy, I need to know what type of lights you want to use. Are, are we using LEDs? Are we using Fresnels? Do I got to worry about heat? Are we running cable? Do I need to bring on an electrician? Are we battery operated? Are we Do we need to be in a location with power? I need need to know about your equipment. Your equipment matters if I am the director on scene. If I am the business that's saying we have a problem, we can't we need to bring in more people to hire and as the project manager who's saying content is the solution to your hiring woes, that client don't care about about the the camera. That client don't care about any of that. That client care about us creating content to help them recruit more efficiently or bring in more people at, at their recruiting points. That is what that client care about. So if you are a freelancer, you're not at that level. You're not up there talking to the client. You, you don't have that relationship. That is not your concern. As a freelancer, you need to appeal to the project manager. So yeah, you need to show up with your camera kit saying, I shoot this, I shoot that, I shoot this. 
But we're not talking about freelancers. Anybody can freelance. You don't need training to freelance. You don't need to take courses to freelance. You do need to learn how to how to, how to appeal to businesses. You do need to learn how to make a brand that can get in front of businesses and sell, that can attract businesses. That is what we teach at Flash from Academy. And I think a lot of people get that twisted um, or don't fully understand what why it's important to 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 know about you know building a business a lot of people just don't take that in consideration because they don't think outside of their world and in their world either you got a job or you freelance like there's nothing in between or nothing after that to them and so i hear a lot of people saying well that advice i don't that advice is bs or i would never do that or i would do this for who for who the advice you're given is for a freelancer. It's, it's, it's small thinking, to be honest with you. It's not on the level of a business owner. Business owners move differently. In the world of business, it's not about the gear like that. I can hire I can hire somebody to do anything I can't do. I can hire somebody to do. The money is in solving problems. It's not in shooting pictures. The money will always be in solving problems. And I guarantee you, if you attach yourself to the to the first thing AI is going to eat up, you're going to have a short career field because the first thing is that's going to happen is AI is eating up the ability to create video and photo. But you know what? You know what the last thing AI is going to eat up? The ability to solve the problem. AI will become a tool for problem solvers like myself. Okay, so instead of filming it myself or hiring somebody to film it, I will just use AI. The same way I use AI to do things I normally would hire people to do. Instead of having writers, we use AI to write. Instead of having voiceover technicians or voiceover talent, we're using AI for voiceover. Instead of editing 50 shorts manually with an editor, we're using AI to mat to edit those 50 shorts so as long as you are ahead of understanding that you are a problem solver and not a, and not a content seller you will do fine with growing your business you will you will do well with how your business grow and you don't you won't be you won't have the fear of ai because ai will become an ally until it can solve a problem from A to Z, it will be an ally. But the first to go are those who are deeply rooted in just being a creative. Because that's the easy part. That's the part I can find people off the street who, you know, love this camera and they're so passionate. I can find talent all day. And, and a lot of people who run businesses will tell you that. Like a lot of record labels will tell you talent is the easy part. Business is the hard part, promoting them, distribution, you know, setting up everything, making sure that albums are places they need to be and album art do what it needs to do and copyright and things are clear. That's the hard part of a record label. It's not the, the talent. We all know somebody who can sing or rap or dance. We all know somebody who play basketball. We all know talented people. And we all know people who cannot monetize that talent. It's great to have a talent. A lot of people have it. Where a lot of people lack is, is in their ability to monetize that talent. And that's all we teach here. We got a whole course dedicated to teaching you how to monetize your talent, period. How to go from this is what I love to do and can do well and how to monetize it. How can I how can I find people who want to pay me to do it? You know, being from the hood, I meet a lot of people that's can draw or they got all these talents and they can do all of this stuff. Big shout out to Jersey. What's up? Um, they, they got all these talents and they do all of these things, but they can't monetize it. The skill is in monetizing it. There's some old fat bald guy that's getting paid from a list of people he monetized that were talented and the people didn't burnt out because they not in style. They didn't, they only made a portion of what they could have made. They went through their money and now they broke or they 80 and they still torn. We know artists that are 80 and they still trying to tour because they need money. And the person who put their stuff out ain't, ain't toured a day in their life. 
Let me flip it. Let me give you another example. You ain't never seen an a NFL owner on the field. You ain't never seen an NFL owner take a hit, catch a pass, kick a ball, block a punt. You ain't never seen an owner get dirty. You ain't never seen an owner out injured. You, you've also never seen an owner's salary made public either. You, you've also never seen an owner talk about how much money they make per contract. They have to guesstimate the value of the team. Every player, you can look up their salary because they want you to keep looking here and not look there. That brings in more talent. They know that if they publicize what they pay talent, it will attract more talent and not more owners. Even the talent who play, who put their body through that, who make millions, even very few of them start to think about ownership because they just don't think about it. They think about coaching and stuff, like things things dealing with talent. Talent is abundance. It's abundant. It's a lot of talent out here. I can find a lot of people who can outshoot me, who can outlight me, who can outfilm me. I can't find a lot of people who can outmonetize me. And I think that's the part because it's not the cute, it's not the pretty part. I know you subscribe to a lot of beautiful YouTube channels that show you how to shoot all of these great shots and how to get cinematic this and beautiful that. But it, it doesn't matter if you can't monetize it because this equipment is not free and is not cheap. You need to learn how to monetize this skill set so that you can get the equipment, so that you can do this for a living, so that you can quit your day job, so that you can make money doing this in a world that needs more of it, more of this than you can Produce yourself. The world needs more content. They need people to create it. Product stories say everything Ty saying is facts. I went from a thousand dollar job to making forty thousand dollars in one. Client came back to spend an extra twenty k. No joke. There you go. It is what it is. You need to present yourself as a brand. Anybody can. It, it's great that you love photography. It's great that you love videography. It's great that you can create this dope content. It's great that you're a Premiere Pro Power user or a DaVinci Resolve, you know, gangster or a Final Cut pimp or whatever you want to call yourself. It's great that you like to shoot with reds and Nikons and, and you're a Canon killer and you, you know, you put Canon on the end of your name and you're a Sony boy or Fuji. You know what I'm saying? Like, it's cool. I, I you know, you, you run out here, you mind all these follow focuses and remote this and light art at and all this stuff is great. I, I love all of this gear, but that should come second to your ability to monetize this passion. Because right now you're buying gear and you're hoping, you're hoping that at some point it'll pay for itself. You have no plan. You're hoping that by having the latest and greatest gear and following the guys that you follow and the ladies that you follow, that that luck will rub off on you because you own the gear they own. It don't work that way. You need to learn how to monetize your ability. You need, to know, you need to learn how to present it to a company that can cut you a check for your ability and skill set. And a lot of people don't know how to do that. Just in general, in life, there's a lot of people who, who know how to weld but can't present themselves as a welder to a company that needs welders. They can present themselves as an employee. They can present themselves as a freelancer, but not as a business. And a lot of companies, a lot of companies or a lot of people don't understand the value is there. The value is in the place that you're overlooking. And that's your ability to present yourself as a brand. It's in your ability to monetize what you love to do. It takes as much practice time and effort as your ability. And a lot of people don't want to, they don't want to contribute to that. They want to be a really good shooter. Shout out to Mexico. Jose from Mexico, shout out. So I think that it's something that we sleep on. It's something that we don't think about. It's something that 
is just left. We 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 don't we it's we're it's oblivious. We're oblivious to it. We overlook it, right? We we want to be so talented, but the money is in the business. The money is not in the talent. The money is in the business. The money ain't in singing and dancing. The money is in owning the masters to the people who can sing and dance so that you can make money off the masters for years. And that person that sing and dance got to go and keep singing and dancing until they're in a wheelchair. The money is in the masters. The money is in the business. So if you don't own the business, if you don't have equity in that, you're going to be just like the rest of these artists who blow up and you think they got all this money and they're so smart and they on the Internet begging for their masters. They on the internet begging for, can I, I would love to get, I would love to own my masters. And companies are making hundreds of millions off of them and they don't even own their own likeness. They don't even own their own name. So the business is where it's at. And business is where we need to really focus on. We got a few qu questions coming in. If you got questions, go ahead, pop them up. I'll answer them. Um, We say Ty taught me some of the greatest favorite artists are broke, but there's some guys in the office still getting paid off them, still, still haven't sung a note. And that made me look at what I do and want to adapt and want to be a dope artist to a business owner. Absolutely. You, you, I mean, think about that. Just, just, just think about the football analogy. What do owners make? Do we know? You can guess. Forbes put out a list where they guess. I can I can Google what the backup kicker make for the Dallas Cowboys right now. That number is available to me. Why why isn't Jerry Jones' number available to me? Because the focus is on bringing in more talent. That's just business. Um, the Jam Fam say honestly, a video company, a video company. I feel like I need to have a great reel above everything else first. Uh, if you can't show the product. Is worth it, it was worth that much, then you can't sell it. Okay, this is the thing, Jam. What what's a great reel to you is not a great reel to me. A great reel for who? If we don't know who we sell into, what's a great reel? That's what I'm saying. The business is so important. What's a great reel? To who? A great show on the Discovery Channel is not a good show on the Food Channel. A commercial that work on Lifetime may not work on TNT. Like for who? What's like to define a great reel? That's what we got to think about. Like you got to define a great reel. We have to identify our target audience to identify our target audience. We have to decide who we're going after. If we don't know who we going after, if we don't, if we have not built our business to go after a target audience, how do we know what's good? What's good for everybody is not good for anybody. So that that idea of thinking is limiting your success um, because it doesn't it, 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 it allows you to stay in a place of it allows you it prevents you from getting to a place you'll never get to. Right. You, you'll never create. And I, and I mean this. I don't mean this like saying you can't create a good reel. I'm saying you'll never create a reel that everybody likes. You just can't. So you have to jam say to who to whoever your customer you want. You have to make that decision. You we, we you have to make that decision. We can't use the machine gun approach. Business is not a machine gun. Business is not a spray and pray approach. Business is snipers only. Every business you know specializes in something. Every company specializes in something. Even Walmart. Walmart specializes in price shoppers by buying in bulk. Target specializes in shoppers who are a little bit above Walmart, who don't want to be with Walmart, who want a little bit more premium prices, but they don't want outrageous. Like, business is not a spray and pray approach. If you stay that broad and that bland, you, your chances of success are a lot less because you have not you have not focused on who you want to go after. And let me tell you this. Let me tell you why, why it's important to force you to think like this. Right. Let me tell you the lesson you're going to learn as you work with businesses. You're going to meet clients who don't know what they want, but they know what they don't want. I don't accept clients like that. 
I make them flush out their idea because that's lazy on their part. And it makes me work harder. You're trying to make a client, your clients work harder by, by seeing a demo reel that may have bits and pieces that kind of fit what they're looking for. Your client got to do more research on your brand to determine if they should give you their money. It don't work like that. Clients want easy, direct companies. So they want their problem solved. They, if, if I got a company to say, we do everything, we blah, we paint, we tear down, we, or I'm, and my house is on fire. I want the fireman. All they do is put out fire. I don't want the handyman who says he can do it, but his reel shows that he fixes and moves and he do it. I want the fire company. I want the company that solves my problem. And the emergency that I have right now is that my house is on fire. I don't want people that got to find buckets and look for stuff. And maybe they can, they coming out looking at the house like, well, we didn't think it was going to be this much fire. I want the company that does nothing but put out fires. And if your company is not that direct and what they offer, you're not going to make it. And if what you think you offer is video, that don't work. That's not direct. That's like the fire department saying we offer water. Well, there's 10 different water companies in my area. There's the company that provide water to my house. There's the company that, that provide irrigation water. There's the company that put out fires. Like what, what are you doing? You know what I'm saying? It's not, it's not direct enough. And a lot of people, look, I'm, I'm going to say this out of, out of kindness, right? I'm going to say this out of love. A lot of people are lazy with their ideas. That's why the business don't go nowhere. They're lazy with their thoughts. So they're lazy with their actions. They never think it through. They never take the time to think about their client and who their client is, what their client do, what their client buy, why their client would buy from them. They never fully flush out the idea. They just have a main idea and they hope it work. I'm just going to go fishing. I got a rod, a hook, a worm. I'm going to find some water and I'm going to catch fish. But a fisherman, a pro fisherman don't think like that. A pro fisherman know what type of fish he want to catch, what size fish he want to catch, what time of day to fish, what lake, what part of the lake, what boat he want to use. He know what weights he want to use, what size line, what size reel, what, what bait he want to use. He know what direction he throwing in. Pro fishermen are completely different than average Joes who just throwing the hook off the side of the water. And if you are somebody who's saying, I just want to start a business to shoot and make video, you, you're average Joe with a hook that's standing in a pond, a lake that may not have no fish. So I think that we I, like, and this is something that I always say over at Flash from Academy, uh, you're going you're gonna to hate me, but then you're going to love, but then you'll love me because we got to strip a lot of how we think about business. And I'm not trying to, I'm not trying to get on you. I'm just trying to, you know what I'm saying? I'm just trying to go into that way of thinking because we get a lot of people who are there. Um, I believe I have a targeted reel for the area. I believe in having a targeted reel for the area you want to work in. It can't be everything. It has to be targeted. Um, but if a reel is made and it's lacking, then it won't sell. I don't, it's not about the area. I, it's, it's about your, you, you should have a target audience. You should have a, a avatar. You should have a ideal client. Who is this ideal client? And do you have a relationship with him? Do you know him? Do you have the ability to get feedback directly from this ideal client before we make any decisions? That is, that is all this is about. This is, this is about finding that ideal client, developing that relationship with that ideal client, and then making business decisions based off their opinion. I'm not even going to give you more. That's all y'all get. But, but that's, that's how you grow a business, right? Companies spend billions of dollars in research and development and Q&As. We don't have a billion dollars. So I'm going to give you the homeboy cheat shortcut way of getting that information for whatever niche market and problem you solve. I'm going to give you the homeboy way to do it. And that there's, there's layers to it. There's things you need to have in place. There's things you need to ask. There's ways you need to approach. There's information you need to learn. 
when you go and you get that information so that you can build your brand. It's so important that you 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 can't eyeball this work because you're not in a position to buy from you. You don't buy from you. Your mama don't buy from you. Your grandma don't spend $20,000 on, on videos about how to repair roofs. She can't help you. You need to go talk to a roofing company or whoever in that company that's in charge of hiring the, the content creators for their marketing. And we need to find out what they like if that's the client I want to go after consistently. So I think that, you know, we can guess. We can half-ass it. I see people do it all the time. They guess. They half-ass it. They say, we'll figure it out. Hopefully this, hopefully that. We'll, you know, but, but we, teach, we teach you how to go get the answer. We ain't got time to guess. Lights, lights going to be off at the end of the month. Baby in the background crying. I spent $3,000 for this camera. I need to get that money back ASAP. I need that bread back ASAP. I spent all this money for this gear. I need, I need to grow this thing fast. Um, that's what we teach. We, we teach people how to build the business so that they can, they can hit home runs and, and hit home runs consistently. Um, Andrew said, Ty even pointed out that the highest paid photo images and art is ugly. Uh, the business behind the sale, even guy who sold a piece for 14 K art that was invisible. Absolutely. Absolutely. Roger say, uh, Steve Austin cannot use Stone Cold. They probably locked him out. Yeah. Hey, they sleeping, bro. RSVP, he said, the fact that he giving this info away. From, I'm giving you the game. I'm putting you in the game. It's up to you whether or not you score. I, I'm, I'm, I can't make it no, no easier. I'm, I'm, it is what it is. I'm trying to tell you, like, as a content creator, and this is the thing. <laughs> We're getting squished on both ends right now. We got cell phones on one side and AI on the other, and we just getting squished. We're getting squished. So you can't even, 10 years ago, image quality was, was everything. My Osmo Pocket 3 can outshoot a majority of cameras. If your camera ain't came out this year, my Osmo Pocket 3 can damn near outshoot it. My my iPhone 15 Pro Max can outshoot a majority of Canons up until maybe a year ago. It's definitely anything before before mirrorless, and it'll take out some of the mirrorless cameras. So, in this quality, everybody walking around with with 16 stops of dynamic range ProRes RAW in their pocket. Or ProRes in their pocket now. Like, we can't... <laughs> image quality ain't it no more, Chief. Your equipment ain't it. What's next? Oh, that you're passionate. So, everybody coming up... And this is what you got to realize. Thanks to TikTok and YouTube, everybody coming up is a content creator. Everybody been editing videos and taking pictures since they was 10. Being a camera guy ain't special no more. I know because I was a camera guy. I was taking pictures before when I had to get them developed before it was cool. So, you know, um, Tubi Jones said, when referencing your analogy of a pro fisherman, can you kindly clarify niching down? Is it on the sales side or the marketing side? It is on the every side, right? Let me give you an example why niching down is so important. Your company name, how do, I, how do I know what to name my company if I haven't thought of my niche? I can't be kick-ass productions if I'm going to work with doctors. I can't be, you know what I'm saying? I can't, like your name, before you go get an LLC, before you go buy a domain, you need to understand what niche you're in. Which means you'll probably have to change it at some point if you choose the wrong niche. Which means you probably have, if you got a name that you like, your, your brand is wrong because you're not selling to you. Who cares if you like it or not, if you thought it was cool? Do your customer think it's cool? Do the business, if you don't got a billion dollars, you need all of these tips to make it. Now, if you're looking at Walmart, they got a billion dollars to market. You don't have a billion dollars. 
I need to look at your brand and understand what you do as soon as humanly possible. If you need to explain it, you failed. You don't have the money to market like that. And if you do, cool. I'm not talking to you. The average Joe who don't got $10,000 a month to market, you need every, everything you can get to win. That includes building your brand around your target audience to compete with the big boys and people who've been doing this for 10 years. I'm giving you the game. I'm telling you how to step in and win. If everything, your color, your font, your pictures, your demo reel, your email, your email tone, the tone of the copy on your website, if it don't talk to your ideal client, what are you doing? What are you doing? An example I've used many times on this, on this platform is when I worked with dentists, again, I asked it, I asked the dentist, like, why, why didn't you hire me one time where I didn't get a job? You know what he said? I couldn't read your website. Your font was too little. My font was too little. I can read it just fine. But guess what? At the time, I was in my 30s. He was in his 60s. It was perfect for me. I liked it. It looked good. Everybody I showed it to within my age range was like, this is the dopest website I ever seen. But guess what? My ideal client was 60. He doing this. I'm done. I can't read this. That's why I say you got to build your brand around your ideal client. Increasing that font. Increase my sales. Little stuff like that that we don't think about because we're not in the shoes of our ideal client. We're not in their world. We don't know what appeals to them. If you, you can guess, but guess what? You are wrong. I know you think you know it. The, the brain is designed to fill in that gap so you don't spin out of control worrying about stuff. I know you think you know it, but I promise you, just like everybody else that's a member who finally get a chance to sit down in front of a beta client and had a freaking mind blown at all the stuff they thought they think they knew and have a beta client say that no 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 none of this huh none of this is right we don't like none of this what, what do you what do you mean so it's so important to build your brand to go after who you want to go after you think check cash in places is 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 a mistake that they in the hood you, you think certain restaurants that you like, you can only find them in a bad part of town? You think that's a mistake? You don't see Popeye's chicken in the good side of town. A church's chicken. You may see a KFC, maybe. You don't see a lot of fast food joints. You see a, a Panera. You don't see a Panera in the hood. You know, certain companies you don't see in certain places for a reason. They're smart enough to know who their target audience is. And if you're getting into this thing, you're starting from scratch, you're learning business, you need everything you can to win. You need everything. You need to do everything you can do to be successful. That starts with your brand because you control that. You're building it. You're responsible for it. You can control it. So let's build it to win. Why would I build it to be mediocre where I can get the information to learn how to build it to win from day one? That way it's, I'm catching fish from day I may not have the best reel. I may not have the best weights or the best uh, bait. I may not have a nice boat yet. But guess what? I'm catching fish off this dock. I can feed my family until I can afford the boat. I can feed my family until I can afford the bet to move up to the gear. I'm not going back to work, saving work checks, trying to buy gear. And I haven't learned how to catch fish with the gear I got. That's what happens. A lot of people out here with cameras and gear, they didn't spend, they're on their third and fourth generation of camera and they made money off the first one. Okay, if it's a hobby, then cool. You shouldn't even be on this channel right now. If you're taking pictures as a hobby, I respect it. Go out and go take pictures of flowers or something. Cool. Go be barefoot in the woods 
dancing, taking pictures of the of the you know lights glimmering through the trees to create dope shadow effects on the on the leaves on the ground. Got nothing against that. I love to do it when I love to do it. But for those of you who are looking to make money, for those of you who are sitting around looking at all this gear and, and the number in your head, you can see the number you paid for that gear pop up above that gear. And what you've made off of it is less than what you've paid or equal. It's time we focus on the business. You got the gear. And guess what? If you don't got the gear, you can rent the gear. You can't rent the business. Let me say that again. Let me say that again. Because some people, they don't get it. They're not swallowing. You, you have the gear. And if you don't have the gear, you can rent the gear. You know what you can't rent? The business. You can't rent the brand, the website. You can't rent the placement on Google. You can't rent your systems and processes. You can't rent how you make clients feel. You can't rent how you appear to clients and where you are for clients who are looking for what you do. You can't rent your ability to solve clients' problems. You can't rent tr the trust you gain by having a well-designed website. You can't rent that. But you know what you can rent? That camera you went out and bought, all the glass in the world, these Reds and Alexas and all these cameras that all the YouTubers talk about having, all of these gimbals and cranes and all of that stuff that you went out and killed yourself to get, you can rent that. You can't rent the part of it that makes you money. People think gear, the gear make the gear don't make you money. The business make you money. The business puts you in a position where you can use the gear to make you money. The gear don't make you money. Go stand on the corner with your camera like this and see if people come up and hire you. Go hold your camera on the corner. I guarantee if you hold your camera on the corner, somebody either going to steal it or that's it. You ain't going to make no money with it. Go try it. So... It's important that you understand the business. Okay, so give a man a fish, he'll feed his family for a day. Give a man a net, he'll feed his family for a lifetime. Absolutely. It, the saying goes something like that. But business is the most important part. And, it, and look, if you want to do it part-time, if you want to do it sometime, cool. But here at Flash Home Academy, we talk about building a brand. A brand that is where your client is looking to solve the problem that the client is looking to solve. We preach this right here, real big. Six steps of the customer buying process. If you haven't seen it before, it's one of the most important charts you will ever see if you're trying to sell video production or photography. The goal is the earlier you catch them, the, the better chance you have of making that sale. If you don't know about that, if you, if you place this and they talk about other stuff and they're not talking about that, you're in the wrong places because Walmart, Target, all these other big brands, Amazon, they live and die by that chart. They live and die by making sure they catch you earlier in the buying stage. Before you even know what you want, when you recognize you have a problem, when you are typing, man, my fan stopped working. When you Googling up ways to fix it, they already selling you stuff. They're already looking at you like, oh, he didn't Google broke fan twice today. Uh, Amazon, let's let's bring up all the dope the fans that's on sale. Let's get them in front of them this week. He didn't Google broke fan twice. They know what's up. So, um, you said going out with your camera on the wrong block, you getting, you getting robbed. Facts, facts. I, for the life of me, I, people think that they're gonna just buy gear and hope that somebody just like they're gonna be sleep and somebody gonna be like, yo, wake up. This is John over at such and such. Listen, we're going to give you 20000 We need you to come down here and uh, shake that camera for us for a minute. Okay, I'm, I'm going to be right. Like, it don't happen like that. You got to solve problems. Pictures aren't enough. We don't live in a world where content is scarce like that. Like, everybody got a camera in their pocket. You're selling one of the hardest things to sell. You're selling one of the hardest. Everybody don't have a wrench in their pocket to fix their car. Everybody don't have a knife in their pocket or a skillet in their pocket to cook themselves something to eat. Everybody got a camera in their pocket. 
everybody. You're selling the hardest thing. You're selling ice in Alaska right now. You're selling the hardest thing in the world to sell. And you still have the mentality that you're going to just stand out there and swing it and it's going to work. You still think that you're going to stand out and wave it and it's going to bring all the boys to the yard. Nah, it don't work like that no more. You got to be direct and solve problems. You got to be a problem solver. And if you're not a problem solver, you're not going to make it. I will be buying your gear on Facebook Marketplace in about 60 days. You're not going to make it. There's no nice way. I can make it nice. I can make it sweet for you. I can be all energetic and do it. I can do all of that. I'm with it. Like, if that's what it takes to get your attention, cool. I can talk nice and slow and pause between my words. Whatever makes you feel comfortable. The truth is, if you're looking to make money with your camera, you need to master the business. Can't make it no more simple than that. Can't make it more digestible. Can't make it nice. Sorry, I'm a veteran. We, we shoot it straight. And if you're, going, if you're going to go into business, you need to learn how to shoot it straight too. You need to learn how to speak to other business owners. Business owners want to make a profit. Business owners want to make a profit. All right, last last call for questions. If you got them on TikTok, Instagram, or YouTube, or Facebook, go ahead and post them, and then we're going to get ready to roll. Hit that like button. Please hit that like button. Make sure you do that. If you're not a member, you can go ahead and download the app because we have these conversations and we get deeper into how. See, on, on, on social media, I just talk about the why. On social media, I let you know that you have a problem. Buying stage, right? Number one is I, for those who realize they have a problem, I am number one and number two. Hey, I got a camera. I'm not making money with my camera. I wonder why. Number two is what can I research to make money with my camera? How can I do that? You see how this works? Number three is me. Number three and four is Flash Film Academy. The difference is I'm man enough to, to show you how the game works. Before you even step foot in it, you're already in the funnel. I'm just going to teach you how to build the funnel. You're already in the funnel. So you, it ain't like you can look at me and say it don't work. You're already in the net. I'm just going to teach you how to do it with, for your business. Because there are people who need what you offer. But you need to clarify. You need to first understand define and then clarify what you offer. You need to, you need to present it as a feature and not a benefit. You need to, you need to know what problems your target audience have and then present the solution to that problem. How do you know if it's a $10,000 problem or a $2 problem? A lot of y'all solving $2 problems. Laura Day said, how do you duplicate yourself and have photographers shoot for your, for you or videographers shoot within without taking your client. Okay. I like this question. I like this question, Lord Ace. Very simple. By hiring help, by hiring freelancers, right? Uh, over at Flash Film Academy, we have, we got contracts to prevent that. Like we got second shooter agreements um, that state that they can't steal your, steal your, your uh, clients and, and that they are a work for hire. And let me explain what a work for hire is. A work for hire means when, while you're on my clock, everything you create, I own, even if it comes from your camera, everything you create, I own. You can't even use it in your proposal. In fact, our second shooter agreement, because, and let me kind of give a shout out to our contract pack because it's almost time to update them. Um, and then we, we'll talk about that. So our contracts are a little different, right? They, they are there. We create our contracts based off the information we get from people in the industry. So we run polls to find out what issues you run across. And then we create legal clauses. So we get stuff that just like you said, Hey, if I hire somebody, if I catch them giving out my card, then what? Right. So we take that information. We take it to a lawyer and say, write this in a legal term so that when I present a contract, they can't get out of it. And that's what we do. So we created 25 contracts because they're all different per job that, that have clauses based on 
what you may run into. So with our second shooter agreement, one of the things that people will run into is people either poaching their client saying, hey, man, I would have did this cheaper or B, they're they're handing out business cards and getting business on your shoot. That's a no go. Number three is the, the content that they create. They can't show it on their website. That's not their content. That's your content. You own it. You, you own the copyright to it. So the contract, which is the second shooter agreement, states that they have to sign it before being brought on as a shooter. You can't work for me if you don't sign this contract. So you need to have those items in place so that you can hire people. I also have shirts, um, branded shirts that that when you work for me, you have to wear. Um so that allowed me to, to so-called duplicate myself. But I hire people that's better at certain stuff than I am. So let me also say, when I say we're getting ready to update update the contracts. So over in our community section at Flash Film Academy, we have a section for each contract where when people run into stuff, they can say, hey, I'm having a big issue with this in, in this industry. Like we had somebody um, tell me whenever they shoot real estate and they're shooting new homes, the homes don't have power. Who's going to provide power? That's something that should be in the contract. A lot of real, a lot of people who do real estate photography, who do new um, homes, run into that. Well, we we added to the we added to the contract. So, and, and you got to think about it. Like, okay, free templates online just cover payment terms, right? They just say I should get paid this, you should get paid that. Cool. AI templates don't have the experience to include the issues that you run across. And if you haven't done it a hundred years, you won't have the experience. It take a group of people to come together and say, this is the top five things we're running across in the industry. We all having this, like I'm giving you another example. Um, wedding photographers was, they don't, they wasn't getting fed. We all see articles about wedding photographers who don't eat. They're not getting fed. Okay. Well, my contract states not only that we have to eat, but when we have to eat, don't feed me last because the only time I get to rest during a wedding and anybody who shot a wedding will tell you is when everybody's eating. So I don't want to take pictures while everybody's eating. And if you feed me last, the bride and groom's done. They're out politicking. I can't get pictures of that. You need to feed me right after you feed the bride and groom, sometimes before, so that I can wolf my food down while everybody's eating, including the bride and groom, and I'm not missing pictures. Those are things that you learn by having experience being out in the industry. AI is not going to write that in the contract, and a lawyer wouldn't know to write that in the contract. That's what make our contracts the industry standard and make them unique, because we got people who saying, this is what we run into. We need this on the contract, and that's just one of them. I got tons of them. Uh, you know, here in Texas, in certain places, when people get married, they like to pow, pow, pow. Well, guess what, drone operator? Don't you think you need to know if they're going to be fireworks, if they're going to be fire or gun shooting at an event that you're at and you're operating a drone? Don't you think you need to know that up front? And what happens if you don't? Those are things that I know a lot of drone operators who cover events have run into. Hey, they're releasing balloons. Don't you think you need to know that if you're a drone operator? Don't you think that will damage your drone? What happens if it rains? What happens if it's windy? What happens if there's a storm and they didn't pay the non-refundable retainer for you to be there? Those are things that typical either regular lawyer contracts don't cover because they don't write about it. And AI don't write about it because they don't know about it. So over in the Flash from Academy community, um, we've opened it up. I hate when I do this. We opened it up where um, you can you can post some of the issues that you run into. So when we do our revamp, we're taking your ideas into consideration uh, before we come out with the next line of revamp, next line of updates. And, and sometimes, you know, things are removed. Sometimes things change, right? Sometimes things change. Um, said he had a, you had a, oh, you had an unprofessional photography studio manager try to backdoor you for your model client. Absolutely. We got model releases. We got, we have, there's, you got to make sure you have contracts. You have to make sure you have contracts. Um, you know, Roger said, I hired a camera operator Sunday for a job. He said, I get pissed when I get outsourced by friends, businesses, and I, um, 
Oh, you realize that again? Oh, my. oh well, I mean that's that's a part of learning the game, bro. You get he getting you getting you getting outsourced. But that, the thing is, like, I don't. My people know there are questions and things I need to ask and get out the way before I could be a part of it. Like, so it, they don't ask the right questions. Contract pack was clutch. Roger said he wore my shirt. And I own the contact uh, content. Absolutely. You need to like technically, and this is what I, a lot of people don't know. Technically, whenever you take a picture from your camera, you are the copyright owner of that picture. Whoever hit the shutter button own it. If you hand your camera to somebody and they take a picture of Jesus coming out of the water with your camera, they own the picture. They own it. If, if they can prove that they had the camera at the time, they own it. So if you're hiring a second shooter, you need to have a contract that states that they were under work for hire, that that whole everything that they have captured and create and captured and created on the job is yours. It's the property of your business. It is your intellectual property. And, and I think that content creators in, in general don't understand the value of intellectual properties. I mean, so many, so many content creators that don't understand the value of the content create because we take it for granted because we can create so much content. We're not getting pictures developed. There's not a lot of work to go into developing the content, right? It's almost ready to hand out or upload directly from the camera. And we don't understand the value of intellectual property. Look at okay. Let's 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 use something we've all seen. Let's use America's funniest home videos, right? They make a whole show. They make millions of dollars. The only budget is the set and the host. The videos are free. That's intellectual property that people are sending in for a chance to win something, and a company is monetizing what you caught on camera to make millions off of America's funniest home video has been on the air for 20 years. Whoever produced, started, wrote it, had the idea is, is driving the best of the best. They're living the best life ever off of your videos. YouTube's doing the same thing. Um, Lord Ace asks, can you explain how you're, how you're in a drone operator for real estate photography? So there are multiple contracts you can layer to do that. Um, second shooter agreement. Um, I, I like to use property release contract. I like to use uh, drone operator uh, for real estate. There's a, there's a layer of contracts I like to use. When, when it comes to hiring, I think there's a lot to it. That's something for more of the member side of things. Um, on the inside, those are things that we talk about. And we also, we actually had a, a group of members that were getting their part 107, um, that were getting their drone license um, that are that are members that we, we always talk about and just changes in the industry, right? What's going on with the DJI band? What's going on with AI? Will we still use as much drone photography? Some people have found a way to use a 360 camera and a long uh, pole um, to get to get shots that are very similar. So, and, and I, and I say this because I don't know what's going to happen with the DJI side of things, as far as what's going on with the government. Um, I think that we just got to keep an eye on it as a content creator. We just got to keep an eye on it. Um, and yeah, let, let me, let me touch on that for a minute. Cause I think that for those that, that tuned in late, the advice that we give here is about being a business owner, not a freelancer. Freelancers need camera kits. They need to, to talk about just the camera we use. Well, what budget did you have in mind? Freelancers, because they're working with a director. A director knows about cameras. A director, the problem that you're solving for that director is your ability to properly expose an image with a, with a specific type of equipment that the director want. The director is solving a bigger problem for the client. That bigger problem is worth more money than a problem that you are solving. Here at Flash Home Academy, we're just teaching you how to solve that bigger problem so that you can get a bigger check and you can cut out the middleman. You can hire people to solve the small problems. The m bigger problems equals more money. That's why they say more money, more problems. No, more problems, more money. 
Big problems equal more money. The equation is right. It's just backwards. I'm not going to say, well, let's not say it's backwards. Let's say it works both ways. More money, more problems, more problems, more money. Nobody just taught you to flip the equation and go, if you need money, find problems, solve problems, period. Well, I can solve a problem with, with, with my, or my skill set. My talent gives me the ability to solve problems. Well, let me find out what problems can I solve. And let me also find out what is it worth to you to solve this problem? Because I may, it may not be worth it to me. So let me find some really big ticket problems to solve and let me build my brand around my ability to solve that problem. That's all this is worth. That's all that is. It's helping you get to success just the same way you would get to a goal. We're just going to back. We're, we're taking it back. Though. We're building up to it. And I think a lot of people never think about it like that. They just hope it happens. They hope they're in the right place at the right time. They hope somebody will call them. But if you have a talent or if, if let's say you're not talented because you don't have to be talented to solve problems. Let's say you're not talented. You just like to do it. You're decent at it. Somebody still got a problem you can solve. You just don't know how to look for problems. You haven't built your brand around solving problems. You never thought about solving a problem. You thought about taking pictures. That's why you're not successful. You think about taking pictures and video. You think about selling somebody on the idea of photo and video. You don't think about selling somebody on the idea of solving their problems. That's why you have not had success. And you haven't had the information to help you change how you think about it. Maybe you're the type of person that think information is a scam. It's a scam. <laughs> I'm not about to join. I'm not about to read no book or get no course. It's a scam. You just learn something there. What, what are you talking about? So a lot of people are stuck with how they think. They think the world works the way they think um, until they learn something different. And once you start learning, once you pick up a book and you start reading, you're going to realize it's a whole lot more to learn than what you than what landed on your plate via Facebook, YouTube and certain headlines that you may have read skimming through information. The good information don't make it to you. The information they want to make to you makes it to you. What they want you to think makes it to you. That's the information that lands on your doorstep. The good stuff you got to go look for. It's in the back of the library. The good food is not is never on the end caps. None of the good food is on the end caps. You got to go deep into a grocery store to get the good food, to get the healthy stuff. It's never up front. The good food is never on the healthy stuff is never on sale when you walk through the front door. If it's fruit, it's old. They probably chopped it up. They're trying to get it out the door. It, it's healthy, but it, it, it got a date on it. That's tomorrow. They trying to move it. That's the only time you'll see something healthy up front. So information is the same way. All the good stuff is deep in the grocery store. You know, free information teaches you how to save money. Paid information teaches you how to make money. That's as simple as I can make it. Um, powerful, you said, what it's worth to solve a problem. You know, the, the thing is, I meet a lot of content creators who, in their mind, they take how long they've been doing this, they take the amount they spent on their gear, and somehow they get a price out of that. They get a price out of that. I I don't know. I, I just, <laughs> whoever you listen to and got that information, they're not out here fighting for real. They're, they're just not, fight, they're not, they're not in the thick of it. Whoever told you that, they're, they're, they can't be doing this. Unless they're a freelancer and they're a DP and they're working with a director. Yeah, the gear you got and how long you've been doing it matters to a director, to a producer, to an agency. You're absolutely right. It don't matter to the person who hired them. It don't matter to the person who hired them. They don't care. They wasn't hired and somebody said, OK, now find me a DP with 15 years of experience to go along with you. Whatever they sold that client, their ability to solve that problem 
the client put it in their hands. So what we teach is for you to have the ability to solve the complete problem. It just so happened that in your back pocket, you have the skill set of a content creator. That's one job eliminated. That's one job that you can do yourself. You've just eliminated some of the cost of labor. So we teach you how to go after the big problems. We teach you how to understand what those problems are. We're not solving $2 problems. We, we're going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to specifically teach you how to know exactly what is what should I be charging for this? It ain't based off what I think. It's based off the market. You can put your car for sale for whatever you want to put it for. But I'm telling you, go on Facebook Marketplace and see what they're selling for. That's what you're going to get for it. You can think your stuff is worth more if you want to. I hear you. Go see what they're selling for, because that's what you're going to get for it. We're going to teach you how to do that. We talk about how to get that number. Because guess what? You find out what that number is, you're going to realize that some of these problems you don't want to solve. Now, I'm good on that. They they only willing to pay that? No, I'm good. I don't want to do that. That ain't for me. And you're going to discover that there's things you never even thought of. Y'all need a training video to show people how to do what? Disassemble this dresser. And that's worth $5,000 to create a training video? Absolutely. So now this is the problem that I solve. So very important. Um, a few last questions before we slide out. I said I was dumb and naive until I realized the world will take advantage of me. The world will take advantage of me. Until you learn how to run things as a business owner. I'm working to get the contract back because I need to protect myself. You know, one of the greatest sayings my mother used to say is the world don't owe you nothing. When you get it, you'll get it. The world don't owe you nothing. A lot of stuff in your life you buy because you don't know, you don't know no better. And, and people take advantage of that. Like it's not, you know, there is no, I'm not going to say there's no morals in business. There is, but it's just business. Hey man, somebody, somebody got to offer check cash and everybody can't get a bank account. Somebody got to make 25% of your check at a liquor store. Somebody got to take the risk. Somebody got to offer, you know what I'm saying? Like somebody got to offer you a $1 cheeseburger, man. It may not be all burger. It may not be all cheese, but somebody got to do it. Like there are, like being taken advantage of in today's day and age is kind of subjective because at every point in your life, somebody's like, that's all convenience is. Convenience is offering you something you can't get yourself or offering you something in less time or effort it takes for you to get it. Just because you don't know how easy it is to get something, that's not their fault. You know what I'm saying? Is it taking advantage of you for charging you $5 for a pack of jello where it's, you can get a box of jello for 25 cent and make a whole bucket no <laughs> you know what i'm saying so it's subjective like how you think about it you can you can go in the store right now and get a pack and get a full pack of jello and it'd be like four dollars you can get a box of jello mix it with some hot water and make a bucket for 68 cent you should have knew better like but sometimes the convenience of not having a, the boil of water and yada, yada, yada is worth it to some people. Some people don't know it's that easy to make jello. Are you taking advantage of them or are you offering convenience? It's up to you how you look at it. But as a content creator, you know, there are some times where, you know, we, we have writers write it. And most of it is chat GPT. Could the client have done it? Yeah, but they trusted us to do it. They trusted us to see that it worked and, and see it through. And, and to add the final touches and polish it off so that it works. You know, it, it is what it is. Um, Craig and said, Ty, remember, we need, to, we, we need this finna folks talk. They doing this wrong. We can hunt. That's right. Hey, we talk about this all the time over at the Academy. Uh, and if you're not a member here, I'm going to post it again. Make sure you sign up. So we talk about 
how um, a, a majority of the industry are finna, finna people, right? They're finna folks. There are people who act like they're going to do it, but they're not. Right. They want they want the idea of an entrepreneur, but they don't. They want to be seen as a business person, but they not. They don't want to do what it takes to really run a business. And we like those people because we can hire those people. All these great, talented people who are out here enough to be seen, but don't want to learn the business. We like it because we get to hire them people for a low price because they're so desperate to use this camera that they bought. And they don't understand business that we get them at for the low. And we go make $20,000 and we pay them $200. So we like Finna people. Finna people help our business. Finna people have a place in the, in the photography and videography economy. Finna folks are great because they finna work for me. That's what I like. I know some talented photographers that will run circles around me. I know some dope photographers that can't make a penny. They're begging people to do shoots in a park and they can't make a pity. They're just not, they're just, they don't understand business. They're doing 50, $50 one hour sessions with prints and they just don't know anything about business. Have, have I talked to them the way I'm talking to you? Absolutely. We've had these conversations. They don't, they just didn't work for them. They don't work for a lot of people, right? That's why everybody's not business owners. Everybody's not cut out to be a business owner. A lot of people need to just show up and work and go home. Cool. I'm finna hire you. I like it. So it is what it is. A um, few other questions came in. The end product is what businesses care about. It's the employee that care about the things needed to solve the problem. Absolutely. Absolutely. When a, when a when a director hire a DP, the DP job is to is, is to make sure the picture good. The director job is to make sure he got a DP to make sure the picture good. If the director is if the director is the project manager or usually the producer who is the project manager, the producer's job is to make sure that the whole project come together. Who you think makes the most money? Whoever at the top. Why not be at the top? Why would I choose to be at the bottom where, where all it takes for me to be at the top is to develop my brand, develop some people skills and invest in making sure that my brand solves problems. It's easy. I can triple quadruple or 10 X what I make per job by learning the business instead of just the, I know the camera stuff. I got it. Muscle memory at this point. So you mean to tell me I can take what it costs or what I've spent for one camera body in my lifetime, invest that in my brand and land jobs that are 10 times bigger than what I'm used to getting paid. Why wouldn't I do it? Make it make sense. I think a lot of people don't, don't understand it. I think a lot of people just don't, they they don't grasp the idea or the importance of of owning the business, um, and they're stuck on just owning the image. Pictures don't pay money. Video don't pay money. Solving problems pay money. So, um, when understanding the algorithm, what one thing people overlook about it for YouTube and Instagram. Uh, this is the thing. And I, I don't, I'm not going to go deep into the algorithm. Um, I don't, I don't think that there is a clear answer for that because the algorithms change based off the needs of YouTube and Instagram. I, I will tell you this, and it's obvious if you look at my page, I have what? 67,700 subscribers. Do you see all of them here today? No, these, these companies are no longer allowing you to reach your subscriber base. Not all of them. They're doing that on purpose because if you can reach 67,000 people, every time you cut on your camera, why would a company pay for marketing through them when they can just reach out to you directly? <laughs> they wouldn't. So you can't, how many of y'all got a notification for this? 
I, I don't have a lot of people watching on YouTube. I got a, I got a few. I got 0.00001% of my subscriber base. I've been on here for an hour. Everybody hit the like button. I guarantee you, I'm not going to reach half of my 67,000 subscribers. So I don't think it's a matter of the algorithm anymore. It's about what's hot right now. Um, and they want what sells today. Period. They want what's hot now. And not it's not about loyalty anymore. You you don't have to subscribers are are just a nice number to have. But um if if you ask me, would I rather have a channel with 10 subscribers and whenever I put out a video, it reached a million people over having a channel that that had a million subscribers and whenever whenever I put out a video, it reached 10,000 people, I'll take the low subscriber count and the high reach over and over again. We just, you know, algorithms are changing. Subscribers don't mean what they used to mean just three years ago. Um, it's just, it's just not what it is. However, I think that you should still be using, um, you should still be using social media for your, for your clients because that's where people go to answer questions, to learn stuff. How many of y'all learn stuff on TikTok? How many of y'all learn stuff on YouTube? YouTube is a search engine. We should be using those tools to help solve the problems of, of our clients. Want to say fact, they didn't see a notification, just happened to be eating lunch and hopped on YouTube. Absolutely. And that's why the goal for me has been to get my audience off of social media and get on a platform where we can talk freely and you're not banned or shadow banned or hidden or whatever. You know what I'm saying? Because, I mean, look, I got... 67,700 subscribers. Shouldn't I have 1% on here? You think that's a lot to ask? 1%? Shouldn't I have 1% of that audience notified to be a part of this live right now? I don't. So so that goes to show you that it's not about the subscriber number. Um, you know, Sam T said, I launched my site, followed everything Taught in Flash from Academy works great. You know what I love? Every Wednesday, we have accountability meetings for those who are not members. I love to see people come back with their wins. I most importantly love to see people come back with their, their lessons, right? Because we, we get to talk about these lessons and we get to share them with each other so we can improve together. And it's crazy to hear people closing these big deals, 20, 30, 40, 50, $80,000 video production and photography deals. And, and it's crazy to, to like to watch them develop over time, like, because they, they come on and they're like, man, I closed a, a $500 deal. And I'm like, great, great. You know, build the brand. I closed a $5,000 deal. And then it's like, I closed a 50,000. Like it's, it's great to see people, like once they grasp the brand or the idea of of business to see them grow, and it all comes down really to understanding your target audience and solving bigger problems. That's that's the most simple way I can make it. If you don't know who problem you're solving, you don't you don't know how to build your brand. I and I, I think that um you know, I, I think that people don't realize the importance of solving problems. And that's right, Crichton, I can talk freely on my platform. And we do. We, we say whatever the hell we want to say behind closed doors. Um, and not in a, you know, crazy, wild way. Sometimes it gets wild and crazy. But um, there are things that if said wrong on a platform, they could shadow ban, they can block, they can hide or whatever. I mean, it's their platform. They own it. I respect it. I, I am I am a member of their platform. And that's cool. Sometimes we can be talking about things that may get taken out of context. Uh, if if somebody, you know, if, if an algorithm put words together, it's happened, it's life. Um, but, you know, I still think that there are tools to be used. We just have to be mindful in the way we use them. Um. You know, you'll say same here. Popped on YouTube for a website. What website do you recommend using Calendly or using another software to help booking or call for a potential client? Um, so we like there's different ones. There is one I like to use. It's on AppSumo right now. It, it may be on Ty's list. It may not. It's called Tidy Cow. Why I like to use it? Because you pay one price and you got it for life. We talk about a lot of on the inside. We talk about a lot of tools, software, and AI that we're using. And we got some special websites we like to use to help us get things um, early so we can pay one price and get it for life. 
I'll say that. Um, you know, question on a pricing section of the proposal, do you put all the a la carte items on? Absolutely. Absolutely. Because let me tell you, when you, when you, and, and I'll use this analogy and I've used it before. When you go buy a computer from Apple, you don't walk in with your budget on your forehead. You max your budget yourself. You upgrade the RAM. That's why they give you tiers. They don't say this is just a MacBook. Good luck. You build it, right? And what they do is they provide you with a bunch of a la carte items. Apple never asks you your budget. Why should I? Anybody that's telling you to act, I'm not talking to freelancers. Freelancers, pause. Cover your ears. I'm not talking to you. When, you, when you're working with directors, you should be asking. But when you're working with a client and you're solving their problem, you're not asking about their budget. I don't, I don't care what your budget is. This is our price. I don't care what your budget is. This is our price. When you solve problems and you're not selling stuff, you can do that. Don't believe me? Go stand your ass in, a, in an emergency room and see how many people ask to see a price sheet when they bled out. Go, go find somebody that's getting in the back of an ambulance that's, that's talking about price. If you need an ambulance, you probably don't care about price. You got a problem you need solved immediately. If you solve problems and you are where people look for those problems to be solved, congratulations. You now have an emergency room full of clients that don't care about your price. They want it done right and they want it done right the first time. So I think that we have to, that's why we go after solving problems and not selling video. You're selling video. You, I hear people all the time. How do I convince clients that they need video? You don't. You don't. How do I convince a, a perfectly healthy person they need a pacemaker? I can't. There's nothing I can do to sell you a pacemaker. If I'm a pacemaking company, there's nothing I can do to sell a perfectly healthy human being the benefit of a pacemaker. But guess what? There are places I can go to get a line of people who are begging for pacemakers. Period. So as a content creator, you need to think about that as a content creator. You need to think about wh what you sell, what you do, what problems you solve, and who need those problems solved. And if you're not thinking like that, you're not, you're not, thinking, you don't, you're not thinking like a business. You're thinking like a freelancer. Freelancers get hired. They need a portfolio that just show cool shots. They don't need a portfolio that talks about solving problems. Remember this? That talks about building something to demonstrate your ability to solve a problem. Your portfolio is, is dope music <laughs> to, to cool clips. Don't work. It don't work for me, fam. It don't solve a problem. So I think that, you know, the goal is, is to separate the idea of a freelancer from a business owner to understand the difference, because there is a huge difference in this industry. I think a lot of people who jump on and look at some of the advice that we talk about, look at it in the mindset of a freelancer or a, a, a small do-it-yourself mom and pop John photography studio type of deal. We're, we're more of a B2B. Um, the only B2C we focus on is like weddings, things like that. But um, and because it, it functions as a business, right? Wedding, wedding photographers uh, use systems and processes and they function as a business as they should. Um, so the goal is to is to solve problems, to build a brand that solves problems. And we just use our camera to solve those problems. Sometimes we may have to use other things. We can outsource that. We can find people that we can bring on our team that we can get the check for, make profit off of, and pay them to do it. That's just business. That's how business works. All right. Um, any last questions before I slide out? Uh, any any TikTok questions? Any Instagram questions? Any YouTube questions? Any Facebook questions? Before I slide out, I'll give y'all about two more minutes before we uh before we slide out. Got it. He said, thank you. It's just my pricing section looks really busy. I'm glad you, I'm, I like that, Sam. Let me tell you why we need to change that. That means, your, that means your proposal is not specific enough for that job type. So I have, like, we only do three things for two, type, two types of clients. 
So that means you need to get a skinnier proposal that's more direct, right? When you go to an oil change place and you go through, let's say for instance, when you go to when you go to get your oil change and you choose synthetic over regular oil, well, you get a menu for synthetic items and only things that people with synthetic would consider. People who want synthetic in their car would probably want a higher end air filter. They want a K&N air filter. They don't want a regular air, air filter. They want rain -X wipers. They don't want regular wipers. People who said, I just want to get an oil change the cheapest way possible. They want the, the no-name brand wipers. They want the no-name brand air filter. Those are two different proposals for two different people. Now, that's that's a little different because we're talking about high-end versus low-end. But my proposal for those who want um, corporate event highlight video is completely different than those who want the whole event captured who want to who create a video with that complete event because they have different upsells. They have different items in the pre-production, post-production and production phase that may appeal to them. You may have too many proposals uh, for that client type and you may need to have, I'm sorry, you may have too much of that proposal. We need to create slimmer proposals. So we need to create more direct personalized proposals for that client type. Your, your proposal is too broad if they can go click on all kind of stuff. If they can go from headshots to adding a teleprompter and, you know, you may have too much. You may have too much on that proposal. Um, and we need to get a proposal that's a lot slimmer for this specific client type. That way we can have unique upsells that appeal to them in that situation. Um, you know, when you start to look at businesses and you start to look at their automated system of buying things, right? When you go buy something from McDonald's, when you go buy a nugget, they then offer you dipping sauce, right? They don't offer you dipping sauce if you don't buy nuggets. Now, you can go buy dipping sauce, but it doesn't pop up as a add-on, a mandatory add-on. Because they, they've built a menu that directly speaks to whoever's in front of it. So once you pick nuggets, they know, do you want to upsize it? Yes. Do you want to drink? What drink you want? Yes. Well, what sauce do you want? Hey, most people who buy nuggets want a cheeseburger on the side or apple pie. Like, so they have their system. This is why CRMs are so important. And, and you need to invest in a good CRM or a proposal systems because great proposal systems do this for you once you set them up. But depending on who your client is, it will offer the upsells based off who's in front of it, front of you. Now, as a sales rep without CRMs, you got to remember this stuff and you got to do it off the top of your head. But if you have a great CRM in place, it will discover, it will know what type of client you are and it'll know what to upsell. That's why you need to invest in CRMs and why CRMs is important. And people are like, well, what's that? I just sell to them and I just write up a proposal. Well, this is what you're missing by not having a good CRM. This is what you don't know. You don't know because you're missing the ability to, to upsell your client. We talk about it all day long in every aspect of it, right? But but a lot of people don't, they don't know how to maximize a client's budget without asking, well, how much you bring to spend with me today? How much you got in your pocket? You can't do that in 2024. The days are saying, how much how much bread you brought over here? What you, what you bring with you? We're going to need all of that, chief. We're going to need every dollar. You, you brought $12? Guess what? I got the deal for you. $11.99. Them days is over with. It don't, them days is over with. If you if you package it right, you can get people to go back to the ATM to spend more than they brought if you package it right. How many times have you brought bought something and you spec'd it out and it was more than what you brought? And you're like, I got to have it. Hey, I, it is what it is. I got to get it. How many times you went to Walmart or Target and you left with more than you, you went to get one thing and left with 20? Because they know how to place things in the aisles to get your attention. You had to walk past all the stuff that was on sale to get to the bread. They knew what they were doing. Their a la carte items presented themselves to the ideal client at the ideal time. That's just business. If you don't know, you don't know. So I think that once we start to put on our business hat and build our brand to do just that, things will work for us. We put, we put things in place in our systems and processes that allow us to get more per ticket. I'm, I, listen, on the, on the inside, I talk all the time about how I was on Thumbtack. I like to turn $500 clients into $10,000 clients, right? 
It ain't that they don't have the money. It's just that Thumbtack give you the option to click the lowest thing. So most people do. If they have a reason to spend more money, they will. They just don't know. They don't, they like, oh, I can get this done for 500. Why not? They don't know why they should spend more money. That's something that you should be good at teaching. That's something you should be good at explaining to your client. That's something that you should be good at, at demonstrating and displaying. A lot of guys are not because we're so wrapped in the idea that me having this camera is everything. Me have Sony. You, me spend 3000 4000 on this camera. You should spend top dollar to No, people don't care. So you have to have the ability to articulate the benefit of the feature you're presenting. And a lot of people don't. They, they just, they lack that. They just think we care about 10-bit 4K ProRes 422. They don't care about that. They, it doesn't matter to your client. So let's talk about what they do care about. And let's focus on that. Different clients have different things. Um, Tyler, everything that you guys are looking for, all the stuff that we talk about is on Flash Home Academy. Um, if you go to Ty List, it's, it's a list of a lot of the tools, software, and even Fiverr jobs that, that I use a lot. All of us there uh, at Flash Home Academy over at the Ty List. So make sure you check that out. Um, let me see. Crichton said 90% of Sony owners are Finna fanboys. I don't know. I'm a Sony guy, man. It could be some truth in it. I'm not, I'm not knocking it, but you know. Um, he said, since not all businesses or weddings, that alone, like, you, like that part of the question right there is a slice. Because businesses are completely different than weddings. Those are two different brands you need to offer. So you damn sure need to have two different proposals. Them proposals shouldn't look nothing alike. They shouldn't even be coming from the same email address. They should be completely different. He says, uh, since not all businesses or weddings will need the same thing, is it okay to tweak each package? You should be tweaking each brand. You should be tweaking each brand. Jen Thomas, what's going on? Frisco, you up the street. What's up? You write up 75. So, so I think it's important, like, when you work with wedding, weddings, brides don't want to buy, they don't want to buy their stuff from companies. They want to buy it from photographers. Companies don't want to hire photographers. They want to hire businesses. So I think that you got to separate those brands. You, you have to separate. Listen, I just want you to think about this. Let's just, let's think about it on a scale that you can relate to, right? If Coca-Cola, and I've used this analogy before, and I want to use these because they make sense. And sometimes hearing it the third and fourth time, you're like, damn, I get it. If Coca-Cola, the number one most recognized brand in the world, if they can't convince you to drink juice from a Coke can, what make you think you can convince a wedding bride to buy from you when your business say company and businesses. Let me elaborate on that. What Coca-Cola did was they went and bought Minute Maid so that they can sell their juices through a different brand that's, that's under the same umbrella. Just so you can feel like your juice was better. Just so that you can trust the juice. When it comes to your company, if you're working with weddings and companies, you need two separate brands. They can be separate divisions. I used to have flash film weddings and then I had flash film media. One of the logos was pink and purple and pretty with flowers. The other was business logo. It was stern and red. And you know what I'm saying? I had two different brands for two different people because brides don't want to come to a website and see pictures of guys in suits cutting ribbons. Brides want to come to a website and see pictures of bouquets and close diamonds and they want to see um you know they want to see accent shots which are technically product photography. The same shots I would use for bride shoes, I would use as wedding photography on the other site, but it don't matter. The same meat that's in a cheeseburger is probably the same meat that's in a Big Mac, but you didn't order that, did you? It's the same insides, it's just how it's presented. So a lot of what you do in your company will be that. But to the end user, they need to see two different brands. 
It makes them feel right now. If you look at it, Kia is having a hard time selling high end cars, even though Kia can run circles around most mid to low level Mercedes. You're getting way more with a Kia, but it's a Kia. And that's why a lot of these companies introduce Genesis. They introduce uh, Acura. They introduce their their Cadillac. They have high-end brands because they know this brand can't sell. Look at GM. GM got three levels. They got the Sierra. They got the GM. They got the, I'm sorry, they got the uh, whatever is the low-level Chevy. They got the GMC version, the Denali. And then they got the Cadillac version. They got three levels that overlap depending on where your money at. A lot of companies offer things in threes or have three different brands for, for price-wise or three different. You don't buy a Cadillac to take it out and get dirty. Even though it's the same exact thing as a GMC, you just don't do it. So they have different brands for different things. Cadillac could be your wedding division and GMC can be your business division, however you want to do it. But you need to separate the brands. Uh, okay, so Coca-Cola made Fanta to market to the Germans World War II because they didn't want to buy Coca-Cola because it was an American genius. Absolutely. He's saying that during World War II, Coca-Cola made Fanta to sell to Germany because Germany didn't want to buy from Americans, but they were unknowingly buying from Americans under a different brand name that they created just so they can get over the stigma of buying from Americans. It's when you start to look in the business and look at the chess match business is and learn about it, you, you will, you can steal from it. That's the thing about business. Like the more you learn about it, the more you can steal from it because the answers are right in front of you. I'm sure you've heard the term success leaves, leaves crumbs, leaves crew, clues, right? You just got to be smart enough to see the clues. You got to be smart enough to see the clues. If you're not smart enough to see the clues, you can't steal them and implement them, right? And, and there's things that I talk about over and over again because people don't get it. Go like... Go into Walmart, go into your favorite store, take your kid. Anybody got a kid, right? No matter how old they are. If you got two kids, do this test with two kids. Go into your favorite store, stand at an aisle, get your, your second oldest kid or your oldest kid and your youngest kid, right? When you get ready to check out, look at what's at eye level for each one of you. And I guarantee you what's in front of you appeal to your age range. I guarantee you at your eye level is People Magazine with drama about whatever. At the 12-year-old, it's going to be V cards and freaking Fortnite crap. And for the little kid, it's going to be lollipops and Snickers and candy. It's designed that way. That's not a mistake. It's designed to be that way. That is how intricate business is. And I think a lot of people don't understand. That's, they, bring, they spend millions of dollars to increase their checkout purchases by 10% or 2% simply by putting things at eye level based off the height or age range of that person. Every little kid that grab a piece of candy and be like, ma, and their mama like, okay, when they add them up at the end of the year, it's like another 20 million in candy. So uh, we have to, we're so oblivious to it because we've been consumers our whole life that once we learn about business and we start to peel back the onion, we're shocked at how how we're taking, I'm going to say taken advantage of, but how well the system works. And I think that we're not, if you don't know, you don't know. You're just oblivious to it. You're just bounced around and you are, um, you know, you're just bounced around and you're just a part of sales and business and we got to we got to think about think about it a little deeper. That's why I like to talk about this right here, the buying stage. That's why we got to talk about catching people earlier in the buying stage. As a business owner, like everybody want to be number 4. But guess what? I caught your client in stage 1. I caught your client the moment they were doing research, I was writing articles about what they should do. And and can you guess who those articles pointed to? as being the, the, the answer to their problem, as, as being the number one provider of solutions for their problem, the moment they realized they had a problem, guess who I said offered the solution? This guy. So by the time they had a problem and you're trying to compete and get in, they already know who solved the problem. You, your, your marketing, your ad that pop up one time 
Don't compete with the three articles they read that I wrote five weeks ago. These articles continue to bring me clients in ways that the average content creator has never thought about going after clients. So I think it's important that we begin to, um, you know, it's important that we begin to think just differently about our ability to solve problems. And that's, that's what we, again, that's what we talk about over at the flash Home Academy side of things. And, and I think that, as we grow and as the as the industry shrink for content creators, we have to the pivot is solving problems. It's not really a pivot. It's just it's always been there. But it's something that we need to be more more mindful of as we grow our our businesses or as we look to make this a full time thing or part time thing for those that want to do this on the side. Solve problems on the side. That's fine. Um few other things popped up. You said the fact that I was talking about Fair Life milk because people don't know what it was. And I said, it's a Coca-Cola milk. They assume the worst because they don't want a soda company selling milk. Absolutely. They don't, it's nothing Coke can do. The number one most recognized brand in the world to sell you milk. The, you just think Coke. You think fizzly fizz when you think of Coke. You think of, ah, when you think of Coke. When you say milk and Coke, it's like, nah can't do it so they come out with a whole new brand sometimes companies buy companies simply for the brand simply for how they're how companies or how um people view that company it's important to them that plus systems and processes and, and distribution and patents but a lot of times for brand um you say I'm today years old when I when I realize being taken advantage of isn't always a bad thing. It's seeing the potential in someone and something in, and using it to secure your bag. Absolutely. You know, it's you you can't it's not always a negative thing. I'm not going to say take advantage of people. It's not that. Um it, 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 sometimes people either they don't have the capability, they don't want to learn. You don't want to learn how to make an iPhone. Is that taking advantage of you? You don't want to learn how to make an iPhone. You just want it, right? You want what comes with having an iPhone. You don't want to learn how to make an iPhone. There's nothing wrong with that. That's not taking advantage of you. Apple solves a problem that I have. It's a communication problem. They solve that problem by creating a superior device that's better than all Androids. I'm sorry if you're watching on that. If you're watching on Android, I probably look like it's, you probably can't see how nice the background is. Unless you got a good Android. Shout out to my flagship Android owners. I'm not talking to you. All my flagship Android owners, I'm not talking to you. I'm talking to the guys who got the four-year-old Androids who think I'm streaming in 480 right now. I'm streaming in 4K right now. Just FYI. But we ain't going to start that war. We'll do that later. But, but you know, business is understanding the importance of solving your clients' problems. And if we don't put... Everything about your brand, from your, your mission statement to your colors to your logo, needs to be around your the idea of solving problems for your clients. And once we discover what those problems are, once we discover that those problems are profitable, very important, don't skip on that. Don't skip on discovering how profitable the problems are. Don't, don't you skip that, because that's very important. A lot of y'all solving problems, they $2 problems, and y'all got $20,000 solutions and nobody's buying them. Y'all got to sell them. Once we discover how profitable the problem that we choose to solve is, we then got to build a brand to double and triple down as to prove into, to the people who need these problems solved as at our ability to solve these problems, period. That's the game. That's, that's me simplifying the game. I can't make it no easier than that. I can't, I can't make it no. Now we got to, it's, it's not that easy to apply. It's not that easy to implement, but it's that easy to understand. And if we understand it, we can then go back and hit that like button. Appreciate you. We can then go back and we can look at our brand and find ways to implement steps towards being a problem solver for our client. Um, okay. Say my four year old, Android is offended. Man, don't be offended. He ain't going to get that for like, it's probably going to be a delay. He ain't going to get that for 10 minutes. But hey, whenever you get this, don't be offended, bro. Four-year-old Androids make really good four-year-old Androids, you know. So, 
I like messing with people. It's all good. Anyway, I'm going to ask that you hit that like button. If you learned something today, if you, and, and listen, your comments are, are more than welcome. I need them. If you learned something today, I'm going to ask that you hit the like button. I'm going to ask that you even post what you learned down in the comments. Take two seconds. Help your boy out. If you learned anything today, if you, if you left this live and you, you can take back anything that you can apply to life or to your business or to understanding the difference between being a freelancer and a business owner, if you learn the importance of solving problems, go ahead. Let me know in the comments. It really helps me make sure I provide you guys with the maximum amount of value that I can that I can offer to you. Um, don't forget, we also got, like I said, we got the Capture and Convert Kit. That's free. And it's loud, too. It's over at Flash Room Academy. It's for you. Two easy payments of free 99. Here you go. Watch. Listen. Here you go. Two easy payments of free 99. Over at Flash Room Academy. I'm going to ask that you hit that like, that share button, that subscribe button. Go take this video and share it to your favorite Facebook group. Post it in your favorite Reddit. Go ahead and slap people in the face with it because they need to know the difference. All right. Until next time, we do this every week. Tuesday, 1 o'clock, 1, 1 uh, p.m. Central Standard Time. All my members at Flash Film Academy, we go live every Wednesday. Accountability meetings, right? We ain't, you ain't just joining and getting courses. We're going to hold your ass accountable. We got to make sure that you are implementing what we're teaching. We want to know what's going on in the industry. We want to talk. We want to have these conversations because as a group, iron sharpen iron, we will continue to grow together. And we, this is just not a place where you buy courses and you'll hear from me. I'm there every Wednesday to make sure you're implementing it because you ain't about to have me out here looking bad. You ain't about to say you're a Flash Room Academy member and you ain't getting that bag. We don't, we don't do that. We, we don't do that over here. If you want to go buy somebody ebook or whatever and put it on the shelf and never use it, go for it. But over here, we believe in action. This, this ain't the finna crowd. What we finna do is we finna grow this business. And we're going to do it by implementing what we've learned. Even if it takes you a year to get your LLC, to get your business going, it's all about steps in the right direction. You may not close a big deal tomorrow, but it's about steps taking the steps to go in that direction so everybody be safe i will see y'all next week same time you've been listening to content and cash a flash film academy podcast make sure to subscribe to the youtube channel and go to our webpage at www.flashfilmacademy.com